Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Ant-Man channel on this Tuesday, the 1st of September, 2015. I'm your host, Ant-Man. I got an article in front of me called, um, Christian Minister R.C. Sproul Jr. is suspended after confessing visit to Ashley Madison in moment of weakness. Ouch, this, this hurts just to read it. This was published yesterday at 4.35 by a Christian Post reporter, Leonard, uh, Leonardo Blair. Of course, this is on ChristianPost.com. Under the column of U.S., I'll put the link. And, wow, <laughs> let's just get into this, man. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i honestly blown away by just um, how much stuff has been revealed. You know what I mean? Like the lies that, that the Bible tells us that we shouldn't, we shouldn't, you know, for as long as, you know, I've been a Christian, I've been practicing not lying, not telling even little white lies. You don't need to lie. You don't need to practice doing that, you know? Uh, we get caught up in doing that for some reason, like as if it's, you know what I mean, okay or whatever. But no, a lie is a lie, and we shouldn't practice lying. And we know that through the scriptures it says that whatever is hidden shall be revealed. Man, your sin will find you out. And um, this is a great, this is a great uh, example of this. R.C. Sproul Jr., son of Robert Charles Sproul, didn't know that that was his name. A noted Reformed theologian and founder of the international Christian organization Ligonier Ministries. Now, if you're like me, I go to Ligonier Connect. I like to I like to study philosophy and uh, apologetics and all of that stuff. It actually helps my evangelism. I build everything on the rock. I build everything on the foundation of the Word of God. I, I, I a lot of you silly people out there think that something wrong with studying philosophy and apologetics. Why? What What happened to Paul's prayer of I, I hope that your love for uh, wisdom and knowledge and the you know uh, the things of God will abound. What what happened to that? You know what I mean? I, I honestly think a lot of Christians today try to suppress people from from being like, you know, kind of like like hard workers when it comes to seeking out the treasures that are hidden in God's word. Being hard working in the in the sense of studying, you know? Um you know, what do you want to do? You want to go get entertained by the world and you know, you want to be like most pastors today that they they preach sermons based off of movies. You know what I mean? That's all you get these days, man. It's just a, such a shallow, superficial world we live in. I don't, you know, you won't profit from any of it. You you would rather spend your time doing something profitable. Remember that what is it that a gain should uh, a man that should gain the whole world yet lose his life, lose his lose his eternal life. You know what I mean? It's I'm, I'm I see the world nowadays like it's so dark that I really I really like you know what I mean. I just try to be. As I just try to keep myself in a in a place where I won't get tempted as much as I can because it's everywhere, you know what I mean? And um, that's just the best tactic that you can have, you know. Your life is going to be more fulfilling and satisfying and full of peace and joy and whatever and, and all of the good things that come along with faith in Jesus Christ. All of that stuff's going to come around when you learn how to love the good and embrace it and intimidate and, and I mean imitate it rather than the darkness. You know, it is our human nature to love or our fallen human nature, our noetic curse, as I think is that what they call it, to love darkness rather than light. Because that's what our, you know, a lot of New Agers and the, you know, people that, the, the kids that, what a lot of the kids believe nowadays is that if it feels right, do it. You know, um, you know, uh, uh, this is natural to me. This is what my body, what, what I do. I like to be lewd and licentious. Or, you know, act as depraved as the next person. That doesn't give you a right because there's an actual, there's a, you got to take it into context. You know, we are we are sinners, but we're not free to sin. Nobody is. Uh, being made in the image of God gives you that responsibility that you must have dignity. You must have, you must have a, uh, you, you know, you must find out what your purpose and who you are uh, is. And that's, you know, pretty much what we're at in, here in America now is that we, we have lost our identity as as a people, and our our identity lies in in the Lord and the Creator of the universe and our Savior. That's who is who we are, man. We need to find our identity through Him and His Word, and um, it's just um, pretty much, you know. You can uh, I know that a lot of us nowadays, man. We'll be we'll be like Larry. We'll be like that movie, The Cable Guy. We're getting we're getting raised by the television, right? Well, you know what I mean? It's just, man, uh, it's really easy to try to find your security and your purpose and your, you know, your identity in the culture, but there's nothing good out there today. 
You're going to find it in violence and gangbanging and drugs and alcohol and in uh, sleeping with women, fornicating. This is all that we do. So it's just better to actually follow through with what it's commanded. You know what I mean? What, what is commanded and what is required of you is to seek out what is, what is good and what is the perfect will of God. What is it that you think that God wants of you today? Do you think that Jesus Christ would watch Fifty Shades of Grey with you? Do you think Jesus Christ would want to go with you to a, to, a, um, to a bar where there are, you know, girls dancing on poles? you got to think about that because that's the life that honors, you know what I mean? The life that, that, that wants to kind of reflect on what it is that we are meant for and what is the higher, what is the higher calling of life. Not the, you know, the inner, the inward man, not the outward man. The debased, depraved man needs to die. He needs to be taken out. We need to feed our spirit so that our spirit becomes stronger. And that only comes through the Word of God. So with that said, I had to say that because, man, this kind of, this kind of news that I'm about to read, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to know people that have taught you so much falling into sin. And I know that we're all going to sometimes fall into temptation. But, I mean, this is not good. You know, adultery and Ashley Madison websites and making it seem like a healthy alternative lifestyle that we have here in America of all of us living this way is really a, it's a very dark thing and we cannot embrace this we must reject it and the people that want to go down the broad way you know what, the, what they're going to find down that broad way that many go down uh and and that's not the way that we should go to man we should be wise and not give up our eternal life R.C. Sproul Jr., son of Robert Charles Sproul, a noted Reformed theologian and founder of the International Christian Organization, Ligonier Ministries, revealed Monday that he visited the controversial spouse cheating Ashley Madison website in a moment of weakness last year and has been suspended by the board of Ligonier Ministries for it. In August 2014, in a moment of weakness, pain, and from an unhealthy curiosity, I visited Ashley Madison. My goal was not to gather research for critical commentary, but to fan the flames of my imagination wrote the 50-year-old Sproul, a Calvinist Christian minister, theologian, and widower in a post on his website. Sproul, whose wife died in 2011, is a father of eight and grandfather of one. When his activity on the website did not result in any physical relationship, Sproul said he felt the grace of fear and the grace of shame. You know you're a Christian, people, when you feel bad when you sin. You don't put it behind you and say, well, whatever. You know, no, you feel bad that you did it and you stop doing it and you want to desire not doing it anymore. We are going to have, it's probably going to happen once or twice. Sometimes God doesn't deliver you from certain sin for a long time. And that, that can take a lot of prayer. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with this kind of immorality, you should probably get away from computers and television for a little while. Fast from it. Not, you know what I mean? Because uh, that'll help you tremendously. It's life changing. I was there long enough to leave an old email address and within minutes I left never to return and I did not uh, sign up for their service or interact with any clients. I have always remained faithful to my wife even after her passing, he said. The grace of God's judgment bore its fruit and by his grace I repented of my sin. By, by his grace I have also received his forgiveness, the outworking of his love, he continued. Sproul said that as evidence of his condition, he voluntarily revealed his activity on Ashley Madison to Ligonier Ministries and was suspended for a year. I recently informed the Board of Ligonier Ministries, which has handled the matter internally. Having suspended me until July 1, 2016, I also informed my presbytery, which is also handling the matter internally, and now the world is informed, he said. My sin, sadly, has impacted those who are in innocent. My colleagues, friends, and family, I have and will continue to seek their forgiveness. I covet your prayers, he added. Sproul said the criminal hack of Ashley Madison's database exposing the private information of millions of users of the website has been a blessing in disguise for some like himself. Amen. I agree. The guy, the hacker that, that hacked into Ashley Madison's website is like my hero. You know what? I feel like this guy must be, that he must be some poor soul that has been cheated on because of this disgusting culture that we have today. And he just said, I've had it. He's going to put everyone on blast and he's going to show everybody that they're all doing it. Because if they are, they're all doing it. This is the trendiness of today is it to be this way. So, of course, this guy is my hero, man. He's putting these people all on blast so that they shamefully are exposed to what they've been doing behind closed doors in the privacy of their telephones and on their internet. And that's, that's good. That's a good thing. 
Um, it's not a good thing that some people have been led to despair and kill themselves because of this. But it's a good example to bring out the gospel message that adultery is one of the worst crimes in all of the law. It is one of the Ten Commandments and it goes on to be explained in very vivid detail by Jesus Christ to say that you don't commit adultery when you sleep with somebody else's wife. You commit adultery when you look at somebody with that intention and with that imaginative eye that you're seeing them with you in some kind of weird fantasy that you're making up for yourself. That is adultery of the heart and you've committed that sin. Jesus turned the law up to 12, or if you will. He turned it all the way up. He made it look like, well, now I really can't fulfill it. Duh. You know what I mean? No, you can't fulfill the law. You can't do it. You know what I mean? And it's, that's the good thing about, that's the good news of the gospel is that you don't have to. You can receive righteousness that was provided for you through that propitiation that Jesus Christ supplied for us. That God would pour out his wrath on us or on him on our behalf and forgive us free, freely. You know what I mean? I mean, I think that that's just amazing, man. You cannot beat that kind of offer. So let's see. Um, so he disguised himself. Yeah, the, the hacker, is a, he's a hero. Uh, people who are, you know what I mean? These are, these people are, are you know, they're, they're doing illegal things, of course. I'm not saying you should go hacking or, you know what I mean? Getting into people's databases, man. I'm not saying that. You don't want the feds on you either. You don't want to get the law on you either. But for my, for my, this is just, this is rich for me because it's like people, you know, they love to hide in the darkness and, and do this and they don't understand or consider or care about all of the harm that they cause toward the people that they love. Come on, you guys. You know what I mean? Don't go through this. Don't put yourself through this. You're going to ultimately disappoint you more than anybody because of those choices that you make. You, you're deceived into thinking this is all harmless and fun. And this is what adults do. This is how we have fun. This is how people that are grown-ups have fun. No, it's not. Don't buy into that lie, man. Don't buy into that lie. It's sick. Many Christians have bemoaned the destruction wrought by the Ashley Madison hack. The truth of the matter is that just as Ashley Madison did not create unfaithful hearts, so this hack did not create damning exposure. Rather, for some it, uh, for some it was a means of his grace. He said, despite the fallout from the hacking of Ashley Madison, the website parent company, Avid Life Media, revealed in a statement Monday that its membership continues to grow. Am I, am I surprised? No. Should you be surprised? Absolutely not. Um, but we should not conform. We should not compromise just because that's the way our society is going. You see what I mean? We must stand firm on our faith. We must fight the good fight. This isn't a game. So... Despite having our business and customers attacked, we are growing this past week alone. Hundreds of thousands of new users signed up for the Ashley Madison platform, including 87,596 women, said this statement. Last week alone, women sent more than 2.8 million messages within our platform. Furthermore, in the first half of this year, the ratio of male members who paid to communicate with women on our service versus the number of female members who actively use their account Female members are not required to pay to communicate with men on Ashley Madison was to 1.2 to 1. The statement continued. These numbers are the main reason that Ashley Madison is the number one service for people seeking discreet relationships. Let's just call them discreet relationships or affairs so that they don't sound as bad as adultery because that's what it is. We have customers in nearly every zip code in the United States as well as users in more than 50 countries around the world, it noted. Well, if you're not praying for America already, this should prompt you a little bit to do that. You know, pray for your country. Pray for your fellow man that they will seek, they will come to the knowledge of the truth and repent and put their faith in God. That's the entire message of the Bible. I can tell you the entire message of the Bible right now. It's that you repent and put your faith in Christ. You abhor your past sin. You, you leave this life behind that you've been living, man. And you go after to the higher life that we have been provided in Christ Jesus not that we are righteous by our own works, but because God made us righteous, we seek to live that life. And we do it as champions unashamed. Okay, you guys? God bless.